Hello, welcome to Dakar Daily. It's day 11. We're here at an overwhelmingly hot Berlin for what has been one of the toughest days of the rally. Absolutely. We've gone from 15 degrees to the mid 30s. Incredibly tough for all the competitors. Now, we've seen this stage run in the past before, but it's a slightly new section, a sandier section at the start. And of course, the famous river crossings to end it as the riders and drivers arrive here in Berlin. Navigation absolutely critical today. Here's the best of the highlights. Stage 10, Salter to Berlin. A total of 795 kilometers today, with all categories covering 372 kilometers in special stage. And we have come down the mountain to 2,980 meters of elevation. In the bikes, the day started with Adrian Van Beveren leading local boy Kevin Benavides by just 22 seconds. All eyes on the Argentinian to take the lead today. And he was living up to all expectations until the final sector when he and KTM's Toby Price lost their way and lost nearly 50 minutes. We thought we caught the right Rio and uh, yeah, quite quite a lot of us went down the same one. So um, yeah, it just didn't, I don't know, it just didn't look like it quite had enough notes there to give us the right way. But uh, yeah, we just, yeah, we bug it up. So um, yeah, it's pretty hard, pretty hard to take. So it just uh, one day like that just wrecks the whole thing. So that left Van Beveren looking likely to end the day with a massive lead until he came off the bike in the latter part of the stage. Sadly, his rally is over. With Price and Benavides lost and Van Beveren retired, Austrian Matthias Vorkner picked up the pieces to win today's stage by over 10 minutes from Pablo Quintanilla. Today has turned the bike category upside down. Matthias Vorkner now leads going into stage 11. Yeah, the second part was really, really tricky navigation and at one tricky point I get a little bit lucky, I think. And yeah, it's pretty cool to arrive first. Meanwhile, in the cars at the time of transmission, Stefan Petterhansel was dominating the stage. The Frenchman left ruining his off on stage seven. He would have been firmly on target for a 14th Dakar victory. Instead, the Frenchman focusing his efforts on catching Nasser Alatia ahead of him. And it was to be Petter Hansel's day. Alatia seemingly suffering a mechanical issue at the end of the stage and dropped over 30 minutes to fall behind Petter Hansel in the overall rankings. Meanwhile, Carlos Sainz struggling in the difficult conditions today, but consolidating his lead. The question is, can Petter Hansel now catch his Peugeot teammate? Here are the results for the bike and car categories from today's stage. And here are the current overall standings. Head to redbull.com forward slash Dakar for full results and much more. trucks have basically obliterated the competition over the years in the Dakar with 14 wins. They're also the only vehicle to have three people in the cockpit. Let's go and check inside. Everybody absolutely loves the trucks and in particular the Kamaz trucks because quite frankly they have obliterated the competition over the years in the Dakar. Now I am sitting behind the wheel because I'm in the driver's spot. I'm the co-driver. It's my job to get us through the Dakar in the quickest but safest way possible. The bigger we are, the harder we can fall. Now, I'm the one you might not know about. I'm effectively the cockpit engineer. It's my job to let the driver know about the temperature of the engine and also all tyre information. I will let the driver know if he can push more on the throttle, if the engine is dealing with it well, but if the engine isn't coping, I tell him to ease off. These are extremely advanced technological machines, and the trio need to know these Kamaz trucks inside and out at a very advanced level to continue doing so well in the Dakar.
Now this is an incredibly rare opportunity to get a real in-depth look at the back of the Peugeot. As you can see from behind me, the boys are going to change the gearbox and diff on the back of Stefan Peter Hansel's car. Now I said gearbox and diff, they're together at the back. In a normal car you've got engine, gearbox and then a drive shaft that runs all the way to differential at the back. In this case you've got drivers, engine in the middle of the car and then a short drive shaft that runs into this gearbox with a gear selector on the top which is connected to a cable which runs to the front of the car. So the drivers are pulling a gear by a cable, comes down to this selector which changes gear in the gearbox. There is then a short drive shaft that runs into a limited slip differential which then sends power out of either of these drive shafts through here. Incredibly, this whole unit weighs just 80 kilos, an incredibly efficient way of transferring power to the wheels. The rally starts and ends in this huge metropolis that is the bivouac. 3,500 people and every person and every area has a huge role to play. Uh, bivouac is like a small city actually. Every day we have to set up a, a big base like that where we can receive all the competitors, the assistants, the organization. And we have to live together during 24 hours and then just move to the other one during two weeks. 12,000 uh, square meters, we can, we are already 3,000 people every day. So you have like almost 1,200 people from sports, uh, well the competitors and assistants. We have 500 people from organization. Then you have on the press center almost 300 uh, people. And then you have all the providers for the food, for the security. Photography, journalism, television, this is where the magic happens. 1,200 hours of TV broadcast over the course of the Dakar to over 70 countries across five continents. El Centro, driver's briefing point, information point, meeting point, and generally a very good place to watch the highlights. Every bivouac has a medical centre which can deal with light abrasions all the way up to a full intensive care unit. They have 65 staff, all of which are multilingual. They work 24-7 all the way through the Dakar and they have on average around 200 visitors every single day. We are a team of 65 people. 20 people are working here. It's a, like a hospital of campaign. We have uh, surgeons, we have uh, physiotherapists, we have uh, emergentists, we have uh, logistical people. We have five helicopters with two doctors in each and 10 cars with two doctors as well, running with the competition. We have very good specialists in traumatology. We have surgeons, we can do any radio, x-rays, but when it's a very difficult case, as we are in big cities, we immediately make a transfer to the hospital. We have selected ahead. We know the surgeon there, and we are immediately working with them. It takes uh, 20 minutes to take the patient to the next hospital. Every bivouac has a fuel station, which houses 60,000 litres of fuel for the competitors, the transporters, the planes and the helicopters, and all 60,000 litres are used up every single day. Not only that, but the entire bivouac is run on mobile generators, which have enough energy to power an entire city. We seem to have managed to get a really nice balance between everybody here as well. The atmosphere is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, this is uh, this is for me one of the best bivouacs of the Dakar because look look around, it's just sand. It's you can feel this Dakar spirit actually. We're not in the city. You can you have some sand all day long, some wind. So yeah, I like this place quite a lot. Everybody needs to have the Dakar spirit because it's tough. Actually, 15 days you need to go around. You need to be every day to wake up with a good good mood, actually. So Dakar spirit, I think everybody involved in this Dakar should have it and have it, definitely. There's not any events in the world that have this magnitude, and it's just incredible.
Now, one of the things we haven't talked about this year on the Dakar Rally are the support trucks. They are absolutely pivotal to the teams in preparing the cars and bikes for the following day. They are absolutely incredible machines. Now, this is KTM's. It's a six by six, able to traverse the desert. If you look at the tires and the suspension on it, it's pretty much the same as a race truck. In fact, a lot of the Dakar support trucks are retired race trucks. Now this is the front of the truck and the first thing you'll notice is how clean it is. Well this is where engines are rebuilt, suspension is rebuilt, so things have to be clinically clean. You can see up here all suspension parts and all of these drawers are full of engine parts. So this is really where the heart of the bike is repaired. Now across all three KTM support trucks there are 60,000 parts. Let's have a look. Exhaust parts, loads of exhaust parts in here. I don't know, let's have a look. Yeah, more suspension bits, more engine bits as well in there. So everything is custom designed in the truck to be, to be packed in a specific way to be able to travel safely. Moving further down, pretty self-explanatory. Tires and rims, rears and fronts. Now moving towards the middle of the truck, again, more parts. We've got just general nuts and bolts down here. Lamps, lights, now you wouldn't believe how many light bulbs and lenses the teams get through. And over here, a little office section where you can see the guys just following the riders and keeping across all the spares that they've got in the truck. And it's pivotal they know what they've got and what they haven't. Now, gear ratio, sprockets, something absolutely critical and will be changed to suit each stage of the rally. Up here, we've got a weather station. Again, pivotal for the team to be able to monitor what the weather is going to do on the rally. And as we get towards the back, just general storage area. There's some awnings in there, some covers. Everything has is perfectly organized in this truck. So, six by six, 530 horsepower, 25 tons of support truck. And would you believe it, this thing can support 60 bikes on the Dakar Rally. Without the support trucks, this event simply wouldn't happen. What a crazy, crazy day here in the world of Dakar. Now, the top 25 finishers of today will start the mixed start tomorrow as they travel from here, Belen, through to Chilecito, except for the bikes, which will be doing the Super Fiambala, and as if they have not had a tough enough day today. Oh, it's been incredible, hasn't it? Oh. I mean, I'm absolutely gutted for Toby Price and Kevin Benavidez both getting lost and losing nearly 50 minutes. And of course, Adrian Van Beveren coming off the bike. We hope he's OK. We've said it so many times, anything can happen on this event and it so often does. Now, make sure you follow all the action using the hashtags Rally Dakar and Red Bull Motorsports. Alex and myself will see you tomorrow in Chilecito for what will be another incredible day. Make sure you join us for now. From both of us, goodbye.